Justin Flo. Everybody is uh, every Justin Flo is kind of the superhero that you never see, but everybody wants to see. You're a big fan of superheroes. Um, listen, you've had three coaching staffs now that basically couldn't find a way to really play him. Um, but there is no doubt about it that his quick twitch, his suddenness, his strength. Everything about him is very, very impressive, Brad. Um, how would you, is there a way to unlock him? Is there a way to get the most out of Justin Flo? You know, I think he, there, there's, uh, there's three answers to that. One is use him exclusively on, on rundowns. Uh, two is to try to use him off the corner in a variety of blitzes and pass rush. And the other might be to convert him to tight end. Right. Um, or that hybrid, but I don't know exactly how big he is. Um, cause he's a dynamic athlete and he's a, he's a very good linebacker. If it was 1997. Correct. Uh, it's the modern game that seems to, um, you know, he's not great on passing situations where he has to drop in coverage. Um, so again, there are ways to utilize them, but with the amount of practice time that college teams have compared to to the NFL where you can't have these situational guys. Can you utilize them in that fashion? And I just don't know. Yes. And the problem is too, is that people are like, just put them in on rundowns. There's a problem though. If you don't know, if you don't have your gap integrity on a rundown, you can't play in there as, as well either. Again, I think everybody would like to be able to, uh, I mean, because physically he looks amazing, but there is also, you know, I mean, uh, the, the mental aspect of the game just, just, has kind of eluded him. And I think that's something that maybe Dwayne Aquina can bring out of him. I don't know, but this is the fourth different DC that he's, uh, that he's had now. And at some point that it's on the player, it's not on the, it's not on the coaching staff, William. Yeah. I mean, there, there are just some guys who are phenomenal athletes who are not great football players, just as there are great football players who aren't phenomenal athletes. Right. And you know, with now, what do you think about just unleashing him as a pass rusher? And just saying, go, 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 go get him. What do you say about that? The problem there is his lack of size. Um, sure. You would have to use him in a variety of blitz packages, but then you kind of know as a DC, as an OC that he's blitzing. Um, right. If you line him up at end, uh, then what do you do? You check down into a run to that end and right. try to blow him up with a much larger tackle or tight end. Um, again, I think there are ways to utilize him, but I think you have to just pick your spots. Or you hope that it clicks this year. You hope that Dwayne Aquina is the teacher, um, that the new linebacker coach is, is a, the type of teacher who can utilize it and, and make him a guy you can use 20, 25 snaps a game. Do you see this happening? I, I, I think they'll find a role for him, whether that's five snaps a game or 25 snaps a game. I'm not sure. But yeah, I think I, I don't think he'll be completely buried on the bench. I also don't see him getting enough snaps to be a, a, an all conference type player. What do you say? All right. I'm going to say Justin Flo in his career has one sack, one sack in his career. Over or under three and a half this season. Under. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's but I, I think I'd go over one and a half. So you think he's going to have two sacks? Yeah, I think you could you could scheme him into two sacks. Yes, and Dennis Walsh says Manu is Flo's opposite. Yes, if uh, if uh, you combine Jacob Flo and uh, or Jacob Flo, if you could combine Jacob Manu and Justin Flo, you would seriously have Lawrence Taylor. That's what you would have. Yeah, I mean Manu's a and, and Manu's a good athlete. He's mm -hmm. just small, right? Uh, it's not like you know we've seen some other guys who have been athletically challenged. Um, but are great football players. Uh, Manu is a good athlete. He's just 5'10", um, right. which, again, is a little bit overrated for what he does because, you know, he's he you don't line Manu up on a tight end to cover. Right. Um, you know, there's a, the, well, he's not durable. Height has nothing to do with durability. Right. Um, yeah. it's, the, it's the stupidest thing when I hear, the reason we worry about Speedy Luke being durable is not because he's 5'8", because at one point he was 145 pounds. Yeah. Um, notice no one ever really says, yeah, Jonah Coleman. I was no Jonah Coleman was 230 pounds. He was five, eight. Right. Um, as again, as a short guy myself, my lack of height has never led to my injury. My right. lack of athletic ability and my, now my age leads to injury. Now, so I think that's dumb. 
the, now, the, Joseph says, Joseph, you're right and you're wrong, in my opinion. Flo makes the tackle that Haimuli didn't that would have won the USC game. The problem, though, is that you don't know that Flo would have been in position to make that tackle. That's the issue. Ha would he actually have been where he was supposed to be at that point? That is, and again, you've had a bunch of different coaching staffs that have said just that. No, and, and that's the thing. No one's doubting his athletic ability, his strength. Um, you know, there's been some guys come through this program, I'm sure all programs, that are weight room warriors. I think Flo's a little bit better than that, but we're off the charts athletic testing and ability is just they're not football players. Right. Now or let's... and whether it's cerebral or that lack of instinct. Right. Um and you know there's some guys who are soft, but he's not soft. Like